Hello everybody. I just released a video that it was a iMovie and this one's a long take. So here's the long takes and not being fake. And I have uh, recognized that it's time to find out what's in my head. You know, you process the trauma, you find out the narcissistic abuse, why things are the way they are. And then you process that grief, which could be an ongoing thing, but you don't want to stay there. Like what's next people? What's next? Whether you are still in a situation, marriage or otherwise, in which you are constantly subjected to a pathological narcissist, which we all know what those are whether you are in that situation or not what's imperative is that you on a daily basis develop yourself and that actually when I was in uh, my second marriage which was awful uh, increasing increasing abuse means uh, what, what is emotional abuse like what does it look like People who have normal couple arguments don't get what it's like being with a narcissist. They shut you out in the same room, under the same roof for whole days. They argue over nothing. They have endless loop arguments. You try your best to create a cohesive state in which, okay, we've agreed upon this. It comes looped back around again. It's crazy making. So yes, I will talk about that on and off again, probably for a while until it's done. But it happens to be a situation in which my, many people have found themselves. The narcissistic personality type has finally been identified and it's systemic. Yes, it's systemic. So because of that, it's in institutions as well. So you can see it running itself like a personality type in corporations. You can see it running itself in things like what happened in 2020. But let's go on, shall we? So I'm talking about uh, Walter Russell next. I found out about him. I forgot how, excuse me, excuse me, William James. I found out about Walter Russell first, but William James is more approachable for now. So let's start with him. So the principles of psychology was written after a psychosis actually. And because Walter Russell and William James had so much connectivity, even though they were like far apart life-wise, I think one wrote their book in 1890, the other wrote their book in 1920. But I think they, they were in this, I feel them together. So not that they were, I just, Whatever, this is what I, this is my presentation. So, starting off with um, the William James's uh, book, Principles of Psychology, published in 1890, but the writing began well before that. He was a man born into wealth. And because of that, he had the opportunity to travel. And because of that, he got to see things. And because of that, he saw things that he didn't want to see or wish that he did see and it gave him his own existential crisis because he saw what was really happening so what was happening to the people in certain levels of life done to them by this level yeah wouldn't it be nice if capitalism actually was profits but not always over people not over people at all and that there were social credits which is a good thing Social credit should be adhered to corporations and corporations only. I think a social credit scoring for corporations needs to go into effect so that it actually affects the value of their stock. So if you put social credit scoring in, in, a, in a way that was fair, but who's the judge what fair is, but at least you'd have to put the criteria on that the people who worked there had a certain employee level of satisfaction uh, you would have to have that they did uh, minimal environmental pollutants. And I'm not talking about the carbon thing and sustainability. I'm talking about actual. And 
that they actually created livable communities rather than bright stadium lights because you change incandescent to LED, start the LED off low, but then you increase the brightness level for why? And then tell people you're saving their money while actually jacking it up to a brightness levels that are daytime level in cities? In the name of security? We're being bullshit. So humans don't like bright lights at night. Bono shows amber glasses as the thing to wear is because they are. Look into it. So I'm going to be talking about uh, all kinds of things. And these are some of my notes. I took notes off of the um, outline for what was going to be in the book. And I found stream of thought interesting, the brain activity, reaction time. And there were things I didn't understand. Habit, we can all talk about. Uh, will came way later, but that's one of the things I've been having a um, thing with. I've been talking about how um, given thoughts that are confusing and conflicting, it, it lessens a person's will. Um, conception, beliefs, reasoning, perceptions of reality, production of movement. So oftentimes when a person goes through trauma or if they don't know what to do, they go into inertia, malaise, they stop moving. Some people sleep a lot. Don't be judging yourself. Those are all things that are happening. It's sort of like a fucking computer restarting. Uh, we also have instinct, emotions, and then there's hypnotism, methods of, such as television, television sets, cathode rays. Uh, and then also what we will want to do a field trip to the library to see if there are any books of Henry James left. And I would like to get Wings of a Dove. So behind me, we have a fire. We're gonna go down to it. Shungite. Suburbia. <clears throat> so I made that fire. Uh, for starter, I used dry wood and little spiky spacks I found, you know, tinder, kindling. Um, I forgot the whole Boy Scout thing. It's a good thing to learn. And in the back of my car, I tend to have a fire making kit along with a thermal space blanket. But before I take trips in the winter time, I always make sure I have a survivor kit in my car. <clears throat> Just a space blanket, a way to make a fire. Yeah, I think I'm going to make sure I have all that going on and I'll show you what I've done. It's mainly just to be able to have an adventure in life without worrying about your freedom um, of feeling like you're going to live through it. Like it's nice to be able to enjoy yourself and have the freedom of enjoying yourself and not worrying about whether you'll live through it. Like people who drive in a blizzard. <laughs> they're going to get stuck and they're going to freeze to death. Unless they have a survival kit. Survival, survival kit, really important. So, that's the little fire I'm having tonight. I'm, I'm at my cat sitting gig. This is where Ricky lives. Ricky and Simon. Um, those are cool cats. I really like them a lot. And uh, I get to, you know, be in a backyard so I can take off my shoes and be barefoot. I can have a fire. And, uh, 
I don't complain about lights at night because I don't have lights at night bright, bright, bright in my face. It's wonderful. Yeah, that was that's the complaint I have right now. Where I live in my condo, and uh, what's happening with that is um, we're, they're going to put a shield on it, meaning a plastic or silicone adhesive uh, over the actual bulb. <clears throat> so we'll see what that does. There's a price, of course. Uh, and then we'll go from there. But it'll be a little game for me to play, you know? Uh, I told you about constructive eviction. Constructive evic eviction in Virginia is how I got out of my lease when I lived in Virginia and it was an actual truth. In other words, it was a constructive eviction. I never heard anything again from the landlord who was bulletproof Jewish and don't let that, I, I like Jewish. I mean, I first, my, my college boyfriend was Jewish. I like them. What I'm saying is <clears throat> he, he would tend not to let anything slide unless I outsmarted him. Or he respected me. And he respected me. Because they knew what kind of man man was. <clears throat> that guy in Virginia, they knew exactly what kind of man he was. And before I left... The buddy, old pal of um, my, the, in other words, the realtor that represented the space that I rented, the um, commercial space, he, he propositioned me. He wanted to date me. He was a New Yorker. It's like, no way. Once you do one New Yorker, you'll never do a New Yorker again. <clears throat> it's like having food poisoning with a certain food, you never ever want to try it again because you can't get over it. I can't get over eggs. You know, the country boy I told you about, uh, he's back in many videos, all right? Just just go back and do, do, do a scan, do a search, check my channel out. I'm a storyteller. Country boys, okay. Want to hear it? <laughs> well, I got to know him and he gave me eggs from his organic uh, chickens. Turns out he doesn't give his chickens any chicken scrap at all. He, he gives them feed out of a bag. And then here's, here's the deal. Before I knew any of this, he gave me a basket full of eggs. And he said, keep them out at room temperature because they haven't been washed. And I said, yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, thank you. And then something started smelling and then one of the eggs exploded and the entire place filled with uh, nauseous sulfuric scent. And it was a black feathered chicken there. And I had to pull, I had to run out the side and open all the doors and fumigate and run the air conditioning on high because it was in the dead of summer. That's, so he, he basically was giving me all these eggs without checking and I was too stupid to go, oh, I need to see what one sinks. That's the one that's got a dead chicken in it. <laughs> so, so I, I was smart enough to know that you don't necessarily have to wash <laughs> eggs that you pick up, but it's a good idea too. And that's one of the things they don't tell you. If you, if you have a friend that has chickens, like what are they feeding it? Anyway, uh, a little tip. But ever since then, I've noticed I haven't wanted to eat eggs. I, I just can't eat them. So that's what has happens. And I think that's how people get out of an addiction is when you were to actually become so grossed out by it. So I'm so grossed out by men right now. Maybe they were my addiction. Maybe that's what it was. And so by becoming unaddicted to men, this is all hypotheses. These are all maybes and what ifs which is the theme we're going into. Maybe that's put me into this place of like, I don't know what the fuck my life's all about anymore. It used to be about getting that juice. This is a what if, this is a maybe, this isn't a is. 
So I'm in that place. It's like limbo. You're not, you're not, okay, speaking for myself. I put so much effort into a relationship. I spent so much energy into it that that's why I'm in this place of standstill. It's like I have all this time and I'm cleaning out my closet and I'm not doing it the Marie Kondo way. I'm not going to be a minimalist. I am not going to do anything other than figure the fuck out what I'm supposed to do with it because it is representative of who I am. And there is no method I'm gonna to apply to it other than I've got the cat sitting blues. <laughs> so I just spilt my wine. Actually, I just gave it to the earth. I didn't have much more in it, but it was sort of like, that was it. That's the baptismal, what I just said. Oh, I love it when we have a breakthrough. All right, everybody, stick with me. We'll go places. We're on the rise.